Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to BNC World Headquarters on this Tuesday, the 19th of May. I'm Laverne McGee. And I'm Fred Hickman. Thank you so much for joining us. The House has approved a new stimulus $3 trillion bill, the latest of four bills geared to help Americans weather the COVID-19 pandemic storm. But those measures had bipartisan support. This one doesn't. The position from the opposition seems to be a more cautious approach. Unfortunately, it is small black businesses that don't seem to be getting enough help. Joining us now is David Clooney, executive director of the Black Economics Alliance. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start with uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who says of this $3 trillion price tag, yeah, it's a big price tag, but it's a big problem. Uh, but how big a problem is this for black families who are trying to get by through this whole thing and uh, black owned businesses who are struggling trying to ride out the storm? So this is a huge problem for the entire U.S. economy, full stop. Um, if you look at the need for small businesses, for example, uh, to try to get through this crisis, and we're looking at just about two months, the, the total need would be $2 trillion. So the 600 or so billion dollars that went out in the first two tranches of the Paycheck Protection Program, for example, doesn't even begin to uh, to take care of the need. So if you're looking at the black community in particular, um, we are unfortunately more vulnerable than our counterparts uh, because of a legacy uh, and, and a long time, uh, a lack of access to capital, lack of access to um, affordable health care. And, and that those are really the reasons that we're seeing worse outcomes. Um, everybody is seeing tough outcomes from, uh, from this pandemic, but we're seeing worse outcomes for the black community, both on the individual side and on the business side. So one of the major demographic groups affected by all of this is black unmarried people, uh, many of whom have not even filed their 2018 tax returns um, and therefore their stimulus check is not yet in the mail. So what advice do you have for those folks? Correct. So one of the things that this pandemic has done is really put a magnifying glass on some of the structural cracks uh, in our financial system and our education system and our healthcare system and others. Um, one of the things that we have been asking Congress to do uh, last month, the Black Economic Alliance put out a call for Congress to look out for black workers, black businesses, black institutions, including HBCUs, financial firms, and uh, cultural institutions. And one of the things we talked about was really addressing the lack of access to capital and and you put your finger on it uh one of the ways is a lot of black folks don't have bank accounts so um if the uh, individual stimulus checks for example are going out to families um who filed a tax, re tax return in 2018 and it's going to the same account that they received their return in for folks either who didn't uh file a return uh, who either have you know gotten an extension and haven't filed it yet or did not have a bank account and received a check in a lot of cases th that money is just not reaching people so um we have been asking for congress to really look at learn lessons from some of the things we're learning here in the Paycheck Protection Program, I think is a great example on the business side of what we're learning about lack of access to capital and how black folks really have not had access to um, banking relationships. And that's on the business side. On the individual side, unfortunately, the same thing is happening with some of the individual payments. So we've talked about looking at things like um, increasing the uh, SNAP payment, for example, that helps uh, get food into you know on, onto people's tables, even looking at EBT cards as uh, an option for a way to get money to people who are unbanked or underbanked. And you know, you've, you've touched on it, but l let's put a number to this. It's a startling statistic to me. Low income black households have 46% access to banking of any kind. 77% of white households do. How do we bridge that gap? So that's one of the things we're really looking for Congress to do in this, uh, both the next bill as well as the, the future stimulus bills, because unfortunately, I doubt that the next bill, even if the $3 trillion, trillion dollar HEROES Act that the House passed uh, were to go through, I, I doubt that would continue to fill the need that we're going to see for the next couple of months and years. Let, let's step back and put this in perspective. Congress has spent uh, upward of $3 trillion in the last uh, four bills, and it's poised to spend another two you know, plus trillion dollars here. If you look back to the 2009, um, the 2009 uh, economic crisis, there were two bills, one $700 billion, one $800 billion. So we're talking multiples of what we saw you know, just a little over 10 years ago with the Great uh, Recession. What we're trying to do is have Congress look much more long-term and think about, you know, this is the, the largest 
allocation, reallocation of assets we've seen in our lifetime. So really be thinking big about what we need to do to shore up some of the structural damage in our systems and really uh, create a more level playing field. So uh, I, I, we like a lot of the things that are in the um, that are in the HEROES Act, but we really are trying to get Congress and, and now the Senate, now that the bill has come out of the House, to really be thinking uh, bigger, longer term, and and you know get past things like the Paycheck Protection Program is, is you know important, but it really is a an immediate relief program, and to get past the immediate payments and immediate relief, and think about how we can allocate resources in a way that acknowledges uh, the unequal playing field that there's been, unfortunately, for a number of folks. And I think we're seeing with the outcomes that uh, black people and black businesses are seeing uh, during the pandemic, that there needs to be specific action and, and really decisive um, targeted actions taken to get resources to the places where they're most needed, uh, particularly in the black community. David, very interesting insight. For our viewers who are not familiar with the Black Economic Alliance, can you tell us a little bit about it and how people can get in touch with you if they need more information? Sure, I appreciate you asking. So the Black Economic Alliance is a nonpartisan uh, coalition of business leaders and aligned advocates who push for um, black economic progress, uh, focusing on work, wages, and wealth. And uh, we do it through advocacy, public policy, and political engagement. So if folks want to get in touch with us, they can reach out to info at blackeconomicalliance.org, uh, our website, blackeconomicalliance.org, or you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, uh, on a number of different um, social media uh, feeds. So would love to hear from different folks and uh, would love to, to be back on to talk more about this as you know we continue to figure out uh, where this pandemic is going to take the economy, but particularly for uh, the black community. Great, wonderful, and real quick, what city are you guys based in? Uh, based in New York, uh, well, well, I'm sorry, we're based in DC, I'm in New York. We have operations nationally though, so we're really a national organization um, and, and we get involved uh, on the political side in races nationwide um, and really our policies are, are looking at the federal, state and local issue, uh, state, local uh, and federal levels. Can anybody become a member or it's for business owners only? So, uh, great question. It was started by uh, business leaders and business owners, but really we welcome anybody who um, is aligned with our priorities, uh, which is trying to move the needle uh, in a systemic way on the issues of work wages and wealth and really just black economic prosperity. So we welcome anybody uh, who's willing to stand alongside us and, and support us in that effort. Wonderful. Thank you so much, David Clooney, Executive Director of the Black Economic Alliance. We appreciate your time. Thank you.